Future Hacker Life Path Future. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Future Hacker. I'm your host, Maria Taigi, and today we're talking to Robert Wong. Robert was the CEO for Brazil and South Latin America of Corn Ferry International. He was appointed by The Economist as one of the 200 most distinguished headhunters in the world. He's the author of two bestsellers, Success is to be the Equilibrium and Super Hints to Land a Great Job. Robert is a speaker, lecturer, a certified coach, and the founding partner of Robert Wong Executive Consulting. Hey, Robert, it's so great to have you with us today. How are you doing? Hello, everybody. Greetings from Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's wonderful to be with you and with you in particular, Maria. Already willing and able to start. It's such a pleasure, Robert. So let's do it. Uh, Robert, as we all know, you've been working as a headhunter and coach for so many years. You probably have seen it all, right? So when you compare people from 30 years ago to nowadays, which do you see as the main differences when it comes to the professional relationship? Like their expectations, their aspirations, also on the company side. So what has changed in terms of skills and experiences needed? Well, first of all, let's let's make a correction. I don't know if I've seen it all. I'm still seeing a lot of things and every day it's a new surprise. That's what makes life so fantastic and wonderful. You're always learning something new. I like your question, Maria, because 30 years ago, that's a long stretch of time. But let me try to answer your question by showing the differences between what happened 30 years ago and what's happening today. In the past, uh, people were looking for employment. They wanted a job because the job was a source of income so they could have their day-to-day lives. Today, the change is not looking for a job or employment. It's looking for your employability. It's radically different. Because employment is you being passively waiting for something to come up. Employability is you proactively showing the market what you have that's different, that's employable. Look how different it is, okay? In the past, people wanted participation in a company. Today, more than participation, people want to work for a purpose. It's so important, purpose. In fact, one day, a reporter came to me and said, Mr. Wong, can I ask you a question? So, my God, you're a reporter. That's what you do, right? Ask questions. Yes, I have a $1 million question to ask you. Go ahead, shoot. What's your $1 million question? Mr. Wong, what's the purpose of life? Wow. (laughs) I stopped for a minute and said, "Mm, the purpose of life is to live a life with purpose. Oh, my God, she said. That's the shortest, most incredible, most precise answer I ever got. There's lots of people giving me these long, stretched out answers that sometimes I don't even understand. Mr. Wong, you in one phrase said it all. I said, of course, because my purpose is not necessarily your purpose and vice versa. So each one has to look for their purpose. Continuing, in the past, people were more passive. They accepted what came along their way. Now, today, thank God, people are more positive. They want to find what is it that's good for them. So it's positivity rather than passivity. In the past, when we were babies, we were dependent. and People were dependent on the company, society for their needs. So when you're dependent, you do it for me. Nowadays, people have learned that they are independent. They think they can do it all. So the pronoun became I. Instead of you do it for me, I can do it for myself. Independence. In the past, people looked for motivation for their work, for their lives. Motivation. Motivation comes from motive for an action. This is what moved them, the motivation, which is good. And motivation are normally external factors. Money, power, fame, something that moved me, that took me to a purpose and end. Today, thank God, people are more than motivation to look for aspiration. What can I aspire to? What can I stretch myself to achieve? Aspiration. 30 years ago, people had a vision of what they wanted, which is cool, a vision. What do I see up front? Today, more than vision, people are looking for a mission in life. Mission comes from the Latin word missione mitere, which means what can I get out of life? What's my mission in life? It's so much more meaningful. So that's what it is, Maria, these differences. Uh, you talked about companies. What do companies, uh, were they looking for in skills and experiences? In the past, people wanted hard skills, mathematical knowledge, management skills, decision-making, all these hard skills. 
And these are teachable. But today, because of the new、uh, environment, people are looking more for people with soft skills. And soft skills are part of people's nature. It comes with the territory. Some of these soft skills are not teachable. Either you have it or you don't. Some are, but most some are not. So at the end of the day, it's all about people. Every product or service that is launched in the market, every single product service. It's launched for to attend to human need, desire, or expectation. What I call the NED. Nothing is launched without attending this need. So now, more and more, you know, what's the most important knowledge that companies are looking for? People who understand human nature, human behavior. And if you've got that, you're worth a lot. Such an amazing answer, Robert. Thank you so much. Just perfect background to start the interview. I'm really glad that we are actually heading towards a way in which people is not just working to pay the bills, but it's more something bigger than that. Is aspiration, having a mission in life, have, having a good impact in the world, right? Which brings us to the next question, which is: Let's try to look ahead, 30 years ahead of us. What do you believe will be expected、uh, from the future workers, and what are going to be the new expectations? You just drew such a beautiful scenario from 30 years back to now. So, where are you betting our coins on the future? You know, that's incredible. That's a, that's a great question, and we want to be futurologists, look to the future. Today, I see that. Employees or workers, they're looking for their employability. But in the future, and what they're going to look for, their vocation. Vocation is an incredible word. It comes from the Latin word vocare, vocal. You know what's vocation? Your inner voice, your calling. My gosh, if you heard your vocation, you're never going to work again in your life. You're going to jump out of bed in the morning to do that. Very few people are working based on their vocation. So I tell you, dear listener. Try to listen to this inner voice of yours. It's going to be amazing what you can achieve. As I said, today people are looking for a purpose in their lives, in their profession, which is great. But more than that, in the future, we're going to look for a protagonism. I don't want to be just a, a another actor. I want to be the main actor. I want to be the protagonist of my life. Today, from passivity in the past, people are looking for positivity. You know what's in the future? Proactivity. I want to call the shots. I want to be proactive. I said again in the past was dependence. You do it for me. Today it's independence. I can do it. In the future, thank God, we're going to live a world of interdependence. And the pronoun is we. We're seeing co-working, co-inhabitation, all that co stuff, which is great. And thank God, we are living in a mutually dependent world. So that is called interdependence. As I said in the past, was motivation. Today, aspiration. You know what's in the future? Inspiration. Inspiration is not external factors. It's your own internal factor. It is your calling. And if you find true inspiration, my God, get out of the way. Nothing will stop you. And the main source of inspiration is love. Love for God constructed cathedrals. Love for a woman made the guy build the Taj Mahal. And love for whatever you love will make you inspire to great things that you can't even imagine. And finally, the future besides mission, which is so important, is innovation. And I want to say not innovation for the sake of innovation. It's called pragmatic innovation. Pragmatic innovation is making things that are useful and practical, not innovate for the purpose just for the sake of innovation. It's got to serve a purpose. That's beautiful, Robert. Wonderful. Thank you. And you know, let's keep talking about the future. You know, after all, it's future hacker, right? We can't really talk about the future of work without getting into education. And honestly, Robert, I, I've been learning that we can't talk about really the future of anything without getting into education, right? We all know how our current educational model in general is outdated, and it's pretty much up to us to go after more modern methodologies out there. The companies. They will definitely face a gap between technologies they have available right now and the knowledge of their workforce. They will have to invest in educating their own employees until we have a system able to keep up with the speed of innovation, right? So, what's your take on that?、Uh, what's your advice to both people looking into getting more qualified and companies looking for this scarce knowledge? Also, are you a believer in the lifelong learning model? <laughs> sure, I am for sure. Education is so important. It makes all the difference in the world. You know that a school instructs. Instructs. That means puts a structure in you. 
but life educates. It comes from two Latin words, ex and duco. Duco means to lead out, to bring out. Life educates. It brings out what you've learned in this life and all the other lives that you've lived before. That's amazing. So what I have today is not something that I've, I produce from nothing. It's all the experiences, lifelong learning I've learned from this life and other lives. And that's amazing. You know what's the difference between school and life? You'll love this. In school, you learn a lesson and hopefully you pass the test. In life, you pass a test and hopefully you've learned the lesson. Oh my God, there's so much we've learned from life. And unfortunately, people don't learn and they keep on making the same mistakes. They end up in the same jobs and they divorce and end up marrying a future spouse that's almost the same as the past one because they haven't learned the lesson. Companies discovered that the best education for executives and professionals does not come from schools, not the normal schools that they were accustomed to, it comes from corporate universities. Microsoft, even Hamburg University for McDonald's, they give you practical knowledge. And that is so, so important because it's pragmatic. I'll give you an example. Uh, when I did my postgraduate studies, I did it in England. I was graduated in engineering here in Brazil. And then I went to do a postgraduate course in England. Different from Brazil, when I graduate from the engineering school, I get my certificate of engineering. In England, for my equivalent colleague there, He doesn't automatically get his certificate once he graduates. He's got to do a residency like doctors do. Graduate from university, engineering, then you have to do two years of residence. Working in sites, in the field, you have to mix concrete, you have to build the highway, you have to pop up. And then later you undertake a test, which is evaluated by the company director, by your mentor there, and also by the university teacher. And once you're qualified, then you get your certification. I think this should be done in all the schools. Whatever profession, you have to do a residence. You have to have that practical material. And this is so important. Regarding lifelong learning, Maria, it's like riding a bike. If you stop, you're going to fall off the bike. So if you stop learning, my dear, you're dead. And with the competition nowadays, you have to be always, always renovating. And if you don't innovate, you're dead, you're past. Robert, some people believe that in the future, this model of working for one big corporation, nine hours per day, following a hierarchy will change. It actually already started changing that, right? So people will be more, let's say, project-based oriented, working with global networks in different projects for different companies even at the same time. So do you believe in this type of model or do you think we are heading like some different way? That's a great question, Maria. As I said, in the past, people looked for an employment and that's a job. It was a source of income so they could live their day to day. And it was reactive because you reacted to what the market had available. There's a job here, there's a job there, there's a job there. I don't want this one. Mm, that may be, oh, I want this job. So you went there and uh, applied for the job <clears throat> um, position. And if you got it, great, you were chosen. But then you had to take what was given you. You couldn't say, hey, I don't want to report to this guy. I want to report to the other guy. No way. I don't want to have 10 subordinates. I want 20. No way. Take it or leave it. So you were reacting to what was offered you. Today, uh, people are looking for their employability. Employability is fantastic because it's not you react to what the market has to offer, but you proactively show the market what you have to offer. Nobody does that. It makes a huge difference. In fact, I'll show you a very interesting analogy. In the past, people thought the world was flat, you know, like a plate. And people were scared to navigate to the border there, to the limits there, because they, boom, they'd fall off the edge. But then someone had this crazy idea of uh, going with his ship, and he saw that there was no end. And then he circumvented the whole globe, circumnavigated the globe. Oh my God, the world is round, it's a sphere. And look at the analogy. If you get a plate and pour wine on the plate, boom, you'll make a little puddle and it'll stay there. It won't move. Now you get a ball, a sphere, and you pour this wine on the sphere. What does the liquid do? Zoom, it spreads all over that ball. This is called globalization. Hey, we discovered the world is round. And if the world being round, things spread. There's no way it's going to stagnate and boom, stay in the middle of that plate. We live, thank God, in a spherical global world and things spread. 
like the coronavirus. It's spread all over the place, unfortunately. Fake news, they spread it like crazy. These are the negative things. Let's spread the good things, the positive things. Knowledge, my skills, human warmth, wisdom, like you're doing, Maria, with this initiative. You're spreading stuff. It doesn't limit to a little group of people. It can spread all over. And if we can do that, especially with this technology, we can make that available to tens, dozens of people, thousands of people, who knows, maybe millions of people. So it's natural that we, being living in a global world, spread things. And you have skills, abilities, qualifications, spread it. Don't limit it to one single company. This is what I believe will happen in the future. That's great, Robert. So much great content and inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing with us your knowledge. So this is the end of the first episode, but keep listening, everybody, as we have a second episode next at Future Hacker. Future Hacker. Life. Path. Future. Future.